Welcome to The Cross. I'm John Wimber from Vineyard Christian Fellowship in Anaheim, California. This new series that we're teaching here on TVN is for the purpose of reviewing some of the fundamental facets of the work of Jesus on the cross. Last time we were together, we talked about the life of Jesus. We talked about it in, in a theological term of the Christ event. We said it had five parts. The virgin birth, the sinless life of Jesus, the cross itself and his death on it, the resurrection, and then the ascension to the right hand of the Father. We said all of these are integral parts that make a whole, the incarnation, Jesus in the world, Jesus the Son of God taking human form. But the center of it for us and for our purposes in this study was the activity on the cross. Today I want to continue with the cross and look at one, a new aspect of it, and that is to say the activity of the cross as it relates to the creation event itself. Because you see, it all began with God making a man, God making Adam. To be more f fully uh, acquainted with and to understand in a more complete way the need for the coming of Jesus, we must have a grasp of why we need the grace of God. Because in the coming of Jesus, we receive the grace of God. It's important to understand how it all started. And so I want to go back to the beginning today. I want to begin with Genesis, the first chapter, uh, verses 26 through 31, and look at the activity of God in the activity of creating man. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Uh, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over everything, a living creature that moves on the ground. And then God said, I will give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So here in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we have the uh, activity of God creating man as part of the whole process of the creation. Uh, in the aftermath of establishing the heavens and the earth and all that therein, God created man. And uh, some of the most important and essential truths for all of human life are found here encapsulated in these few verses. And I suppose we could take uh, these few verses and spend weeks, maybe months, uh, and never exhaust anywhere near the truths that are found here. But it all begins with the initiation of God. We see God acting. And we see God acting within the context of his own counsel. That is to say, uh, we see God operating outside of the, any kind of collegiality, any kind of communication with man, doing what he wanted to do. The scripture opens with, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Evidently, God, that is to say the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were operating within a context of their own desires, out of their own plan, out of their own will, and initiating the activity of establishing man on earth. One of the most uh, remarkable aspects of all of this is the understanding that God initiated, and God initiated out of, out of love, out of care, out of concern. God created something for his own fellowship. God created man for fellowship so that he could have relationship with.